Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that we're going to see a part of UFC 271, Leo Mano Martinez. Mano, as always, man, I appreciate time. It has been some time since we we've seen you. So I was just, I was kind of thinking about it as I was you know kind of you know putting down some notes for to, for our conversation. Was like, how long have you known about this fight? I've known about it since about mid December or so maybe even early December. So I've known about, I've known about it for some time. Um, and I've had plenty of time to prepare. So it's been, it's been a good while. I mean, obviously it's not a, a 13, 14 week type camp. I mean, he's still a, a good size camp here. So, um, you know, since you did have a good amount of time to prepare for this fight, did, was there kind of stages of, of the camp of how you kind of uh, tailored your training? Um, I wouldn't say stages, you know, it was just a regular normal camp. I did switch a few things up. I headed out to, um, Lee summit, Missouri with, uh, glory MMA and James Krause. And I spent, um, about five, six weeks out there. So a good amount of time, you know, got some great training in. And, um, these last couple of weeks, I just recently got back home and finishing up my camp here. So, so it's a normal camp. Minus, you know, uh, the climate change over there in Lee Summit, but uh, it, it was a, it's been a great camp overall. It, you know, I was, uh, I was going through your Insta, or your Instagram, and you're not a, a guy that you know posts all the time, but, it, but I did see James Krause respond to one of them, and, and I did think I was like, man, did he, did he go over to Missouri to get some work? So, what led you to decide of okay, I want to get some work at their glory? Um, you know, after my last fight. Uh, unfortunately, you know, some things happened with my coach and, um, rest in peace to him. And, you know, after that fight, James, you know, went out of his way to contact me and, you know, um, personally through my phone and he, um, you know, said I had a great performance, great fight. And, uh, he would love to have me at, at his gym anytime. And, you know, him really opening up his doors to me and reaching out to me, you know, really meant, meant a lot to me. So, uh, leading up to the camp and the beginning, I had a sit down talk with my family and, you know, close people close to me. And we decided that's what was going to be best for me, you know, especially um, trying to excel and help my my career get to the next level. And I'm obviously at the fighting at the next level. So I just want to continue to get better. And um, that was a great spot to go to and, and help me out to get there. I've spoken to so many people that either train at glory on a full-time basis or, you know, they come there for a couple of weeks at a time and, and they talk about James Krause as a coach for you, you know, just getting to know, his, you know, how he, you know, handles his athletes, how he's trying to get the best out of you. Was there, was there something that stuck out to you about him of why people rave so much about him? For sure. Yes. And uh, everybody's speaking very highly about him. So I can back up 100 percent what you were saying. But um, it's not only on the mats, but it's off the mats as well. You know, um, he just doesn't look out for you as a fighter. He looks at, out for you uh, for your career in the long run and, you know, in real life as well, because, um, you know, some coaches may just be looking out for you and what you do in the cage and octagon, which is nothing wrong with that. But um you know, for a coach to make sure you're okay outside of the cage as well. And, you know, your financial situation and how you'll handle it about and just other situations in general is, is, uh, something really that stuck out to me and, and, um, made, made, um, made, made him really, really look up to, made me really look up to him as, you know, a role model. And, um, just, just the little time I spent with him being, it, he, uh, learned a lot from him and, um, he showed me a lot. Obviously, you were you mentioned about the passing away your coach Saul Salis a little earlier. When you look at it, you compare their coaching styles. Is it very similar? Uh, similar in a sense, yes. Um, yeah, I guess you could say similar in a sense, but very different as well. You know, Coach Saul kind of had the old school style, um, which is nothing wrong with that. Just put your head down and grind at work, which James has it as well. Um, but you know. It's a it's a new time coming, and uh, you know, MMA is always evolving. Whether it's from you know, starting with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys who took over, then to you know the karate guys, and now it seems like the wrestlers, and you know, the, the sport is constantly evolving, and, and I feel like that's what James is, do, is doing is evolving with the sport, and um, 
yeah, Coach Saul was doing the same as well. But uh, fortunately, like I said, things happen with him and um, may he rest in peace. But yeah, similar, very similar, but very different as well. You know, in terms of your corner for this camp, uh, who is going to be in your corner? So I have James, of course, uh, who I was just working with. And then the last two who were in my corner, Adrian and my dad. So good, good lineup, good team. And um, I feel confident with those guys. In, in terms of your dad being in your corner, what, is your dad quiet or, or does he speak up a little bit? Um, he'll speak up when he needs to, you know, but he kind of lets James handle it or he'll probably most likely let James handle it or Adrian. Um, you know, it's, I love to have him there for moral support and, you know, don't get me wrong when, when, um, strategy is needed or, you know, certain things he sees that I can be doing in there that needs to be corrected or he sees a certain opening, he'll let me know. But just having him in my corner since I was young, you know, training martial arts and going over everything is, uh, you know, just a good mental aspect for me. And I feel very comfortable with him in my corner. So it's, yeah, it's very, um, supporting of him. And when he needs to, he'll speak up, but other times, you know, he'll just kind of let the other guys do, do what they have to, but if needed, like I said, he'll step up. You know, it's going to be a much different environment for you making your second walk to the UFC. I mean, A, you're going to be in front of fans, but you're also in your hometown. Like, is it one of those things of was was fighting in the Toyota Center kind of like a bucket list item for you? It definitely was. And and I was blessed to um, have already fought there my amateur days for the um, Bellator undercard. But just kind of like the post fight card, technically, because I fought um after the main event, which was I think uh, was it Gracie Shamrock or Kimbo and Dada, whichever it was. I fought after them, and um just as an amateur, you know, it was it was real bright lights. Oh, mess is a big arena. Obviously, not quite as packed because the main event had had already finished, but um it was still cool just to get that experience out the way and to do it as a professional at the highest level, you know, for the UFC and making my second walk only is, um, something I'm super ecstatic for. I'm trying not to get overhyped and, you know, stay as calm as possible and save it all for fight night. But it's just, I just can't help but smile every time I hear about it and, and feel so joyful about it. Cause I, I one not only love fighting in front of a live crowd, but in front of my hometown, it's what I've done all throughout the regional scene. And uh, I've really excelled and shined when I'm in front of my hometown. So it's just going to be a great night overall. And I and I can feel the atmosphere already just, just pumped up and um, amped up, ready to go. Is that kind of like, as you think about this matchup against Ronnie Lawrence and you think about like, you know, hey, the, these sort of things I have to do to, to walk away with a W, is calm one of those keys to victory for you? Definitely. Most definitely. You know, um, I know hearing the crowd and everybody cheering on my name, but, um, you know, and me up, but I'll just have to stay as calm as possible, you know, not fall into the, you know, the crowd hype and, um, and just fight smart, fight, fight technical, you know, as much as a crowd, as the crowd wants to see a bra and bang it at the end of the day, us fighters, we have to be smart, especially myself and, um, you know, fight to our skill set and fight to, um, you know, what's ever most comfortable for us. So yeah, I think being calm and, and keeping my composure would definitely be one of the main keys, um, that fight night. And you can definitely see myself doing that. If you watch my other fights, I, I stay as calm as possible. And, um, yeah, once it's time to turn it up, I, I switch that, that level and flip the switch and then, Put the gas on the brake on the on the on the pedal. The brakes. I, I mentioned about your opponent Ronnie Lawrence. Uh, ha, hasn't it's all, almost exactly going to be a year since his last fight. He was supposed to fight in July last year. Had an issue with the, with his weight cut. Um, you know when you when you take on an opponent, and, and obviously you understand what his abilities are. There's plenty of tape out there on him, but he hasn't fought a year. Do do you sit there and say of okay, I'm probably going to see something new, or or is your mindset of like I kind of know who he is as a fighter. Um, you never know which fighter you're going to get at the end of the night. Um, you can study as much film as you want. Prime example will be my contender series fight. And I hate to bring it up and talk about it because it obviously didn't go my way, but, uh, I studied him and, you know, I seen a boxing background stand up and I was like, 
cool. This is gonna fall right into my game. You know, I'm gonna go in there, stand. Knock him out, get my contract, and uh, unfortunately, I ended up waking up from a triangle choke. So, definitely can't underestimate him, and um, just go based off what I've studied from the film and from what I've seen. Do I have a general idea of what his game plan is or what I think he might do? Yes, of course. But again, once that bell rings, all that can go out through the door and um, or throughout the window, and he can switch the game plan up. So, just got to be ready for whatever and um wherever I decide for the fight to go or the, the, the fight happens to go, I'll, I'll be ready anywhere. Is, is your expectation of like, I know I'm going to see takedowns. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then I go into that with every <laughs> single fight. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously with my record being nine and two, eight TKOs, knockouts, uh, guys are going to want to try and eventually get me to the ground. And, um, that's fine. I, I showed a little bit of, a slight glimpse with my uh, wrestling, my last fight, and I showed I can take people down. So, if we, if that's needed, we can go to the ground as well. But um, I try to keep it standing as much. But if not, I'll be more than glad to wrestle, scramble, and um, let's have the let's have the fight go anywhere. Uh, just thinking about what you said there about you know how much you know your contender series fight, and obviously the way you win, and you, you talk about watching all that film. Where does that kind of rank in your biggest lessons in the sport? It's got to be one of my biggest ones. It's definitely got to be up there. Um, so it's what drove me, you know, to get on my, my one, two, five win streak and get another opportunity set up in front of Dana looking for a fight. So um, uh, it definitely taught me not to underestimate anyone. You know, I don't want to say I underestimated him which maybe I did, but I just didn't expect the ground game. And I guess you can call that under, underestimating. So, um, yeah, it, it somewhat humbled me. You know, I've always been humble, but humbled me even more, I guess you could say so. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a big lesson and, um, grateful, blessed for that loss as well as, as weird it, as it sounds to say that, but, uh, it just helped me excel to the next level. And it showed me like, Hey, we got to be ready for anything, man. I, I know we, we've had a chance to talk a couple of times. I don't think I've ever asked you this. Who, what are some of your greatest influences in, in martial arts? Some of my greatest influences, um, would have to be my dad. You know, I was just talking to him about that the other day. You know, I, I remember going and watching him compete at a tournament when I was younger, four or five years old. And, uh, just growing up through him, watching him, Another one of my influences, uh, uh, like an older brother of mine, it wasn't my blood brother, but his name was Umberto De Leon, and he did very well on the regional scene. And um, growing up through my teen years, traveling to Louisiana, driving with him to Louisiana, Oklahoma, you know, to fight these uh, smoker fights, I guess you could call them, or just, you know, little bar fights. It was um, very inspiring. And then, you know, of course, you got like, Hawaiian fighters like BJ Penn who have inspired me and, you know, that just scrap mentality. So, you know, I guess you could say those three main guys and um, I'm blessed and grateful to learn from my dad and, and Berto and, and the time that I did. And then, you know, just seeing BJ's growth and, you know, how well he did is, is inspiring. So I'm sure there's a few others I can name, but those, those three from the top, off the top of my head is what I can think of. It's something you said there about smoker fights. And, and I think anyone who's been in this industry, they, they know that term. Like, as you think about it, as you were growing in this sport, do you think you could put a number on how many smoker fights you had? I, I don't think I could put a <laughs> put that number on it. But, yeah, if you know what smoker fights are, you, you're really, truly invested <laughs> in the game. And, and if you know, you know. So... Um, I, I don't think I could put a number on it, but, uh, there was, there was quite a few. So it's just crazy to actually look back and think about it and, and how far we've came. So from smoker fights under the biggest lights in the, in the fight game. And it's, uh, it's just truly a blessing, man. I, I can't preach and say enough about it. It's like, you've always said, you're not lucky. You're blessed. Always, always. I will live and die by that. I just, I, I, it lasts when somebody tells me, oh man, that was a lucky punch. Or, you know, I'll see somebody say that and I'm like, 
you could think it's lucky, but I know deep down I'm blessed and um it's it's a, it's hard work as well. It's not only just blessing, it's the hard work, the blood, sweat, tears I put into this game. So especially with me only being as young as twenty five and uh, it's just it's it's a lifelong journey and I'm sure we could talk way, way more later down the road about that. But yeah, I'm I'm blessed, man. I mean, the birthday is next month. I mean, we, we, uh, you, you know, it is really the, the one thing you want for your birthday is this W here at, at 271? Uh, it put the icing on the cake. You know, I haven't thought as far as my birthday. I'm just straight focused on next weekend. Uh, I know I've had people hit me up about, oh, where's the after party? This is your hometown. And I'm like, that's the last thing that's on my mind. Somebody even mentioned Valentine's Day being a couple of days after my fight. I'm like, I haven't even thought as far as solely and strictly focused on Saturday. Um, maybe I'll find a Valentine's <laughs> by uh, a couple of days after, but I don't know. We're, we're worried about fight night. And then after we'll worry about, you know, whatever my birthday, Valentine's, all that. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. I appreciate time. Look forward to seeing the fight here. UFC 271. Of course, uh, let everyone know they can find you on social media and anything else you want to mention, man. Um, just thank you for everybody who stuck support, uh, stuck and supported me. I know this is a different fight cause it's not just the regular cheap general admission tickets. So if you bought tickets, I truly appreciate it. Um, won't fail, put on a great show and, um, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Monoboy seven. And as always great talking to you, Jason, I appreciate the time.